But there is a reward for those who do things in secret. <laughs> you have to choose which reward you want. <laughs> do you want the reward for being seen? Or do you want the reward that he gives in secret? And there's that sense, isn't there, when you're dependent upon him, you know that it's not to be seen. I know God gave me a choice many years ago. What do you want, profile or influence? I thought, wow, that's a very interesting choice. But it wasn't a difficult one. I know I've had to accept a certain amount of profile in the end, but I didn't get to the profile by wanting profile. I got to the profile by exercising influence. And that's more important, but sometimes it's the hidden things, isn't it? So little strength. But when you're looking at this, it also goes on and says there are going to be breakthroughs. In this passage, to the church in Philadelphia, it's saying you've got a whole problem in your community. We call it the synagogue of Satan. Just imagine that. This is not just some little tiny cult. This is a group of people that are banded together and they're actually going in the enemy's direction. They're boasting that they're Jews and that they're, but they're not. They've missed the whole point. And what it says here is that because you've got a little strength and because you've not denied my name, I am going to give you this enormous breakthrough where that whole stronghold will actually yield and these people will end up worshipping at your feet. Now, I'm not interested in people worshipping me and I hope you're not interested in people worshipping you. Worshipping at your feet, as far as I'm concerned, is you're there watching them worship God. That came home. I used to struggle with this passage. This was the one bit that I struggled with. What does it mean to worship at my feet? And then one day, when I was still leading Cornerstone, I was sitting in the front row of the church, very much where Pastor Cola is today, and someone did an altar call. And I looked at the people that came forward, and I was amazed at some of those people. And I realized that as they were giving their lives to God, and, and it was a powerful altar call, there were people that were bowing down, giving their lives to the Lord, and I thought, that is what I want to see. You know, they were at my feet, but my feet were not, as it were, pointing towards them in that sense. I was standing behind them, but I could see a move of God. And I want to tell you, you're going to see some moves of God that are going to be like that. When people that you never thought would bow to Jesus will bow to Jesus, and you will be there to witness it. And what is more, when you ask them, why did they respond? Was it because of something I said? Was it because I preached a great message? Was it because, you know, I am this mighty man of God? What was it that touched your heart? They're going to say, I could see that Jesus loves you. Which is quite humbling, isn't it? That people don't respond because you're great. They respond because they're amazed that Jesus could love someone like you. <laughs> Can you see what a testimony that is? See, so many of us, we want a testimony which says how much we love God. Just think about it for a moment. It's no miracle to love God. I mean, God is great. God is kind. God is, God is powerful. You'd be a fool not to love God. But the testimony is not that you love God. The testimony is that God loves you. Now, that is a miracle. When you think of his greatness, his all-sufficiency, the fact that he has everything he needs, the fact that angels worship him and he looks at you sitting in the second, third row or wherever you are in New Wine Church this morning, he says, I really love that person. I really love that person. And he doesn't love you because you're lovely. You're lovely because he loves you. <laughs> and it transforms your life. And people respond to Christ because they see in you the fact that his love touches people. I've learned over the years that it's better not to be intimidating, okay? You know, sometimes you can come in and you can say, I've got all of these qualifications and all of these kind of things. That They mean nothing in the end. The thing that touches people's lives, you know, in some ways, the more qualifications you've got, the more distance it creates. Have you noticed that? I know some people whose business cards have got so many letters after their name, I said, have you added the postcode as well? Because it, it just, you know. But sometimes those things can create distance. But when you can say, I'm only who I am because Jesus loves me, that closes the gap. Because he who loves me can love you too. And he can bring that kind of breakthrough. 
So what we're saying here is there's a dependence that opens doors through love. 